Classroom in Residence culminates in a week-long program at the Hammer Museum where a group of students, this year was sixth grade students, come and spend a week at the museum, their full school day. Those students participated in arts integration exercises that were prepared by their teachers. They spent time in the various galleries and they learned visual literacy skills that involved observation, drawing, and inquiry. We have field trips, but to have our sixth grade classes actually go to the Hammer Museum for an entire week every day, I really didn't have anything to reference it to or compare it to, so I really didn't honestly know what to expect. In this area where it's all just businesses and big apartments, very little park space, and just with so many cuts to arts funding, it doesn't allow kids the space to express themselves in healthy ways. We do serve the most highly densely populated area, and almost 90% of our students live in poverty. So for us to be able to offer this once-in-a-lifetime experience, for our students to really see something different is priceless. I would walk the students out to the bus, and the first day, you know, they just went out, and then the second and third day, they were like running to the bus. And I finally realized by, I think, day three, the reason why they were running to the bus is because they were ready. Like, they loved this experience, and they couldn't wait to get on the bus and get to the museum. And as somebody who works in a school and in, in the education setting, I've never experienced that before. Students who come from underserved communities often don't have an opportunity to leave their communities to see what the city holds for them in terms of resources. The Hammer is a public institution and it is a resource that belongs to the community. It belongs to those students. In terms of money, it's hard to come to wonderful places like this. And my other friends would, would tell me, wow, you're so lucky to come here. And I'm like, why? And they would be, they would say like, well, because we're not going, we don't have that many field trips. It was kind of scary, like how are the students gonna be in this new environment? I was a little bit worried about that. And they did beautifully, you know? They were so responsible and so respectful and they concentrated so much, they rose to the occasion. They really felt they were welcome. They really felt like they were appreciated. They really felt they were important to the museum. And that was wonderful for them to see and to, for them to be treated that way. For the one week at that museum, they were perceived as guests of honor and they saw that and they carried themselves accordingly. I think back to the educational theorist Reggio Emilia, and he talks about the environment being the third teacher and the way that environment changes the way that students and teachers learn and also how they relate to one another. And so I think that there's something to that that is incredibly powerful. Where I live, there aren't tall buildings like around here. There's, well, not that modern, but here you feel, you feel like you're in a type of future. I like how it's really decorated to make it really look beautiful and I like all the plants that are outside and I was really surprised when I came here I never thought it was going to be this beautiful. When you see the paintings, it makes you want to, want to make something like that. It makes you think, well, I can do that too. I, I can do it if, if I set my dreams for it, I can do that. But in, in other, other settings, there isn't, there isn't something like this. The classroom teachers were not art teachers, so this was a very new thing for them. I expected to be more hands-off and just sort of like a chaperone, I guess. We wanted to give the classroom teachers as much authority to create the curriculum so it aligned with what 
the sixth grade standards dictated. We ensured that what we were doing at the museum connected to our classroom lessons by first looking at the standards and seeing what was at the museum that would allow us to teach and that when we left the museum it didn't feel disconnected, that there was a connection between the classroom, the museum, and the museum back to the classroom. When the teachers and I met before they came to the museum, I went to their school on Fridays and we discussed ways that they felt their students would respond to the artwork, specifically in language arts, social studies, math, and science. You're going to get a section of it. The piece that you get is around two inches by two and a half, two and a quarter. Okay, it looks almost square, but not quite. And the enlarged part that you're getting is about four times bigger than that. Art isn't just something that is about a painting hanging on a wall, or it's not about just drawing turkeys on Thanksgiving Day, but that art could be something that they could really connect to science or math or social studies. What we did was draw like an enlarged size of the drawing over there. And it was really fun because you get to do your own, like, your own perspective of drawing one part of the art. During that week, there were students who very frequently wanted to volunteer, raise their hands, and put themselves out there who normally don't do that. Spending a whole week here is like giving more time for me to concentrate and to work harder. I've been listening to their advice more because they're artists. They, they've been doing this for years. So like my teacher, you can barely draw a stick figure. The week at the Hammer provided students an opportunity to experience themselves in a new way. As visual artists, as scholars, as researchers, as history buffs, and as movement aficionados, they got to be dancers for a week. Inherently, dance as an activity with a large group of people creates a bond that is different from anything. I was a little worried about the students in the galleries for such a long period of time. I didn't think that they would be able to sit for so long in the galleries just engaging with the work to such a deep level. Before I came to the Hammer Museum, art to me was like just a picture of like a tree or a person. But now that I've been here, I can see it's more three-dimensional, the shadow, and the message that comes with the picture. I enjoyed like how I found details and like how it showed so much color and every time I looked at it, I saw like one more detail and one more detail, like just finding more. And they were looking at a piece of art for like 30 minutes. Most people go into a museum and they look at a piece of art for maybe three minutes. We gave them opportunity to slow down and observe. I learned that I need to do that too, that we all need to just slow down a little bit and not only look at what's in front of us, but question what's in front of us. I like the one that's I'm um, sitting on a chair and looking on his um, side. I wonder, did something happen to him, like uh, his family member, his other relatives? He looks pretty sad. To be able to step back and see them really appreciating art in that way was something that really was inspiring and really caught me off guard and they were really just having a great time, silently. Students as young as 10 or 11, they're aware of a lot of social issues. They're aware of the fact that maybe someone they know has recently been deported or that someone in their family is gay or they're being discriminated against because they have brown skin. But often in school, we don't have platforms for them to talk about these things. The power of art is an artist maybe has put in an image all of those complex ideas. And if you just put the image in front of the students and you ask them a simple question, what do you see and what does this make you feel? The students have an opportunity to say all of those things that they already know are happening in their lives. And it gives a teacher room to let them talk about it, but also to guide them toward deeper understandings about what they think they know. I realized that art really has a bunch of power. It has more power than 
you could say a sword because a painting could leave a message. A painting could make you feel different. A painting could make you see something different than what you normally see. Students come with their whole set of experiences that they can relate and share with others, either through their movements or through their poetry that they're writing. Well, I think that art is power. It's like, it's another form of talking. It's just that uh, it's hard to understand. I really enjoyed watching the students just embrace their identity as artists. They responded. And so it, it shows that given access, any kid, any group of kids can grow, respond, become successful. I get kind of emotional when I think about it because these kinds of opportunities are very far and few between for the population of students that we serve. I really honestly believe that these students will never forget this experience. What was learned at the museum is impossible to teach in the classroom. It was an experience that I can never bring to them. No YouTube video, no pictures, no stories could really bring to life what was done that week. I would hope that if nothing else is accomplished, that the students now, like me, when they go by the hammer, they know what's in that building, and that it may spark a curiosity for them to not only visit the hammer again, but to maybe see what's behind the doors of another institution in the city.